Hello everybody and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. I really hope that my volume settings are in order here because it's been a little while since I've done anything with it and I hope it's just not too fucking loud. I don't know which is which to be honest with you whether or not there needs to be an X on it. I'm gonna guess if there's an X then there. Every time I look at this I get weirded out by it. But we have save points throughout everything just in case so we can always go back through it when uh, if uh things wind up fucking up but uh i i hope that this is the right volume like i said yeah oh, boy i i go way too long before i do these fucking recordings so that is most certainly what we left off on right there yep we were designing a poem is that literally what we left off on though I'm going to do a volume test right after doing this thing, because this would be the best way to do a volume test to see how uh, everything sounds versus my own voice. And uh, try not to be bothered by the fucking sound of my microphone, not my microphone, but uh, my stupid heater sounding like it's about to explode any minute. Damn it. Well, we're off to a fantastic start. Oh, okay, so I guess your word is anxiety. Gotcha. What the fuck is going on here? I might need to reload this. Holy shit. Um. Okay. There we go. There we go. Damn it. Um. Excitement. There we go. Special. Adventure is absolutely your word. Not bouncy, though. Bouncy is too... It's too cute. Music. There we go. Hopeless is definitely your word. And sadness. Probably daydream. Silly. absolutely. fucking lootly If it's not your word, then... God, slap my ass and call me Shirley. Um... Calm. There we go. Now we're... Now we're nailing it all. Misery. Alone. I guess marriage? Yeah, that actually worked. Holy shit. Tears. Damn, we just killed it after the first few, though. Like, the first five were garbage, but everything after that. Holy shit. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do that volume test, and I'll be right back, folks. So let me just put it right here and um, kill the volume so I can hear it. Okay, so we are back. And, uh, yes, yes, see, so my thing is, I believe that the volume was great in that it wasn't drowning out my fucking voice, but there was way too much white noise for my liking, so we're gonna try, uh, negative 13 decibels for the next time that I wind up doing this recording session. If I can take a look back, then this is, this is the future me. Negative 13 decibels. All right, let's continue on. Trying to find a good place for the... There we go. Mouse cursor will go over here. <clears throat> oh, man. I'm the last one here. Oh, don't worry about it. Everyone's late from time to time. Besides, you've been working hard, so I think you deserve some slack. I guess so. I'm usually pretty punctual, but I just lost track of the time today. What made you forget about the time? That's oh, a funny story, actually. I recently decided to learn how to play the piano, so I was just practicing. Now, ah, yes, I remember when that came up. Ugh, I will say nothing about the initial game, just in case you guys haven't done anything involving it, though. But, just saying, it, it is kind of important. <laughs> that, that little, that little detail is kind of important. It's probably why I didn't notice the school bell going off. You can play the piano? That's quite impressive. I always wanted to play an instrument myself. Then go for it, my dude. That's what I always say about that shit. If you want to play an instrument, that goes to anybody watching this. You want to play an instrument? Fucking try it. That's the best way that I can explain it, man. Just go with it. Just make sure that it's something that you're going to want to stick with if it's something, like, more expensive. If you want to get into, like, strings for, like, a violin, for example, because, uh, rentals aren't cheap. And, uh, it's going to suck if you put 800 down on a violin that you'd never touch again. So, make sure that it's something that you're going to want to stick with, trust me. Aha! It's not as cool as you make it out to be. 
I've only been playing for a little while, so I've still got a ways to go before I'm any good. You should pick up an instrument too, Yuri. I could definitely see you playing the violin. Funny she mentions that. Yeah, that pretty much suits Yuri perfectly. Ah, the violin is a beautiful instrument. I'm partial to the sound of the flute as well. Hmm, flutes can be calm and elegant, just like you. Um, thank you. How's it like to play the piano? It's really an enjoyable instrument to play. Not to mention, I really love how it sounds. It just goes well with anything, the piano. It really fucking does. One moment it can sound gentle and soothing, the next powerful and full of force. The piano is an instrument that I'm familiar with too. Well, at least somewhat. My father had signed me up for piano lessons when I was younger. He'd been playing it since high school and wanted to pass his passion down to me, but I never really got into it. Considering that, you'd think that I would hate the piano. But for some reason, I find myself eternally cheering on Monica. Maybe because it reminds me of my father in a way. Monica, you certainly are a talented individual. First starting your own club from the ground up and now picking up piano on a whim. I doubt I'd be able to do that. Oh, don't say that. Anyone can do amazing things as long as they have a passion for it. Which is why I think we're all going to do amazing at the festival. I can't wait for the festival. That, that grin, though. That, that grin. It's gonna be awesome. But that being said, yeah, absolutely. I am in full agreement of that one. If you have a big enough passion for something, fucking go for it. Absolutely. <clears throat> Natsuki, weren't you just protesting the festival yesterday? The thing is, though, have realistic expectations, though, by the way. Just to leave off on a note right there. Don't jump into something and just expect it to go great. Do it because you want to do it, though. Anyway. Well, obviously, I meant everything besides our part of the festival. I still don't like the idea of performing. Monica rolls her eyes. I don't want to start this whole debate over again, either. But I am looking forward to everything else. It's a whole day of school where you can just run around and eat till you burst. I can see the eagerness of Natsuki's eyes. She must really like food. Kind of reminds me of a certain someone. I was just going to say that, but then it moved over to that in the next line. Speaking of which, where is Sayori? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the back of the room, staring out the window. I walk over to her. As I do, I hear the girls continue to converse behind me. Something about squid? That's a funny joke. That is a funny joke. But anyway, um, that, that's a reference again to uh, the original game, Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm going to go and grab my WADA because I forgot about my WADA, but um, as a side note of random things I was thinking of as well, I am hoping, I think that this is about the time where we start seeing some shit happen with uh, Sayori, if memory serves me correctly, with the timeline of the previous game. I don't think anything too crazy yet, but I believe this was when things started happening. But, uh, I will be back. Hey, Sarah. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. But, uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh. Are you okay? She forces a smile. It's not very convincing. Of course I am, silly. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know, you just seem a bit off today. Maybe I'm wrong, but... My mind wanders back to what she asked me as we were walking home together. You worry too much, Fox. I'm fine. Seriously. She shows me another smile, much bigger and more genuine. While it seems much more Sayori-like, there's still something inside me that feels like something's up. Sayori must have noticed as she hastens to explain. To tell you the truth, I just didn't get much sleep last night. 
I'm really tired, so sorry if I'm a little cranky. <laughs> Seriously though, I'm probably not much fun to hang around with right now. Why don't you spend some time with the others? I might try and have a little nap. Uh, all right, sure. Just uh, know that if anything's bothering you, you can talk to me, all right? I'd hate to see you suffering in silence. She nods. Suffering might be a little strong of a word. <laughs> ah, well, you know what I mean. And so it begins. Sayori nods again, then shoos me away. As I wander off to talk to Monica, that feeling of uneasiness isn't going away. Maybe that's just how Sayori is these days? I mean, it's been a good few years since we've properly hung out together. Maybe she's changed. Deep down, I know that isn't the reason. Still, maybe Monica knows more than I do. After all, she is the president, right? I timidly approach her. She's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Fox, what's up? I decided to just jump right in. There's no point in beating around the bush. Hey, so, uh... Have you noticed anything wrong with Sayori recently? Wrong? What do you mean? I don't know, she just seems a little downcast today. So do you have any idea why she might be feeling... off? Like, have you seen her act this way before? Hmm... No, I can't say I've ever seen her like this before. Yeah, she said she's just feeling tired because she didn't get much sleep. But to be honest, I'm not buying it. She's normally upbeat and cheerful. Her behavior has been so uncharacteristic. <clears throat> Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Wait, didn't she say she was going to try and nap? Maybe there is something on her mind. My question, though, is why are you asking me, Fox? You certainly know her longer than I have. Yeah, well, you've spent more time around her recently than I have with the club and all. I guess so. But I've never seen her... I don't know, dismiss me? Maybe she didn't exactly dismiss me, but it felt like she just wanted, to be, wanted me gone. Sorry, I'm just concerned for her, you know? I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, that's all. No, no. I appreciate you coming to me. It's really sweet how concerned you are for her. After all, it's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? You sure that's a good idea? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? I know you've known Sayori longer than I have, so perhaps you are right. Still, it's worth a try. I also have to talk to her about what she wants to do for the festival anyway. Oh, alright. Well, fair enough. I just hope she's more receptive to you than she was with me. Monica pauses, studying my worried facial expression. The warmth of her smile reflects in her eyes. You really care about her, don't you? From what I can gather, you've been friends for a while. Yeah, we've been childhood friends for as long as I can remember. Although before I joined the club, we had been drifting a lot. I hate thinking that she's been like this before, uh, before without me around to help her. Hey, I know it's hard, Fox. It's never easy seeing a friend suffer. But for what it's worth, she's lucky to have someone so thoughtful looking out for her. Don't blame yourself for it. You can't always be there for everyone. I know she's right, but the feeling of guilt still resides. Yeah, I guess. Hey, she's been a lot happier since you joined the club, you know. Huh? Really? Yep. She told me she was kind of surprised at first, as she didn't expect you to want to join. But once she got over that, she enjoyed having you around. Anyway, I know it's hard seeing her like this. I'll talk to her and see what I can do, okay? She'll be fine, don't you worry. I sure hope so. Let's hope you're right, Monica. Thank you for everything, by the way. You've been a big help. <laughs> you're too kind, Fox. Nothing to thank me for. She stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica to talk to her. Dots. Okay, everyone. I think it's poem reading time. Excellent. I want to go from bottom to the top of the list this time. I'm unsure. Why don't we share our poems now? Perfect. I nailed it. Right on the money. Before I know it, everyone is back to normal. 
Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles reassuringly at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Yeah, we're gonna go from bottom up this time for funsies. <clears throat> Hi, Fox. I approach Monica wanting to talk about Sayori with her some more. But she takes control of the conversation before I can say anything and immediately jumps into club business. This might come as a surprise, but we have a festival coming up soon. Oh wow, never would have guessed. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at that festival? Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in, in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Despite any praise the girls might have given me, I really doubt that my poem is up to snuff. I'm sure that there's not... Alright, I'm sure that there's not just a little bias during the poetry, poetry discussions. Good lord, English is a difficult language, holy fuck. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. I really wish that heater would shut the fuck up. Dear god, that thing is loud. You wouldn't want to let the club down, right? She says it with a teasing tone, but a chill runs down my spine when I think about the implications of disappointing everyone. Who knows what Monica would do to me if I betrayed her as a loyal club member, a uh, club subject. Not to mention, I'm also looking forward to seeing your performance. Right. That's definitely not something that I can relate to. Ah ha ha. Don't worry so much, you'll do fine. After all, you've been doing fine in these poetry discussions, after all. Fucking A, I said after all twice when it was so far at the end of it. English is tough, dude, what the fuck? So you say. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Here it is. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. But, although we're supposed to be discussing poetry right now, I can't help but remain preoccupied by thoughts of Sayori. I'm worried about her, to say the least. It's such an unexpected change that's come over her. Did something happen to her? Fox. Hmm? Sorry, did you just call my name? Yeah, twice, actually. You seem like you're a million miles away. What's up? Uh, I was just thinking about whatever's happened to Sayori. Sorry if I wasn't paying attention. It's fine, Fox, I understand. For what it's worth, you're a good friend for caring so much about her. Th yeah, I know, for the nine billionth time, but let's continue. Thanks, I just hope that things can go back to normal soon, is all. Well, my advice to you would be to let her come to you on her own. She'll talk if she wants to talk. I think that you should respect her boundaries. Eh, uh, you're right. I appreciate the advice, by the way. Of course, I'm always willing to lend a hand and a sympathetic ear if you need one. Today might not be the happiest of days for the club, but that's alright. Not every day will be happy. We'll all pull through this together. I hope so. I feel like I shouldn't be going about the club normally. But I think that Sayori probably needs some normalcy right now. So in the end, I get try to get the poem sharing back on track. Anyway, since we're supposed to be sharing poems right now... Oh, I almost forgot about it myself. Some president I am, huh? Monica quickly whips out her pristine composition notepad. Here's my poem then, alright? I wonder what this one's gonna wind up being. The Box, part two, right? There's the part two of it. I... have we read... three poems now? Is this the third one? I can't remember, I'm clearing out my fucking fingernails because I'm a disgusting slob. But, um... I don't remember. I... I need to more frequently do these recordings, man, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Box, part two, by Monica. On my nightstand sits an ornate box, painstakingly crafted, decorated with the most delicate filigree. Beautiful, beautiful, the most beautiful box you'd ever seen. In that box stands a slender porcelain ballerina. No, not stands, twirls. She is inanimate, yet animate, cold yet vibrant, and oh so beautiful, the most beautiful ballerina you'd ever seen. She spins and spins and spins as the box's melody goes, Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. She neither smiles nor frowns. A permanent look of blank exposure, composure rather, painted on her facade. She dances for my amusement, and yet I am evaded by amusement. The room spins around me. Vertigo. I want answers, but she gives me none. I slam the box closed, and yet the room still spins. My skin, porcelain. Is this all she is meant to be? 
Is this the meaning she is supposed to derive? Is this the sole purpose of her existence? And then her skin cracks, shattering. That is an interesting one that I am not 100% sure how I should take, to be honest with you, but I'm going to let her go about it first and kind of mull about that one. <clears throat> you know, I feel like looking for answers and contemplating your reality are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. Well, too late. You've already gotten too philosophical. <laughs> Might as well continue. <clears throat> but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put too much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. How fitting, somber subjects for a somber den. Ahaha, uh -huh. are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't one-dimensional creatures. It's what makes people so interesting. You might think that it would be better if everyone was happy and uncomplicated all the time, but how would we know what happiness was if it weren't for the sadness to compare it to? Hmm. I guess that's true. Even so, I'd rather not see my friends so troubled. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Do you ever feel discouraged when someone's someone something you've put a lot of time into doesn't get as much attention as you thought it would? For instance, you could have spent hours and hours on a poem, only to have your friends barely glance at it when you show it to them. It might make you feel like doing mo any more is useless. And the sad truth is, the world is so saturated with creative works already that most people won't receive any attention. At least relative to the most popular artists and authors. <clears throat> There's actually not much you can do in that situation besides try your best. However, you should also think of things in terms of popularity and number of views. Most important thing that you should be on your own- Ugh, god damn, fucking Christ. The most important thing that should be on your own personal- should be your own personal self-satisfaction. All right, can I just give up now? <laughs> End of Let's Play right here. Sorry, folks, I'm done. I can't talk. <laughs> Fucking Christ. If you're proud of yourself and your work, then I say that's enough success. Dots. That was the most depressing writing tip of the day ever. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. It's funny, because I was just talking about that, actually, like, a day or two with my buddy Ricky hilariously about that one with like the whole fucking uh, people who do things artistically nine times out of ten it's usually depressing and it's just easier to relate to because everybody has their own shit that they deal with meanwhile there's a weird I don't know there's like a weird mentality that people have towards it where they don't want to be they they just think that you're kind of messed up in the head or something for whatever reason because you write sad shit or you draw sad things and I'm like well no sometimes it's just easier to relate to. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go up from that list, so Yuri is next. <clears throat> Dots. I must say, you've done well, Fox. It's clear that you've been putting effort into improving. Tell me, has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, I think so, anyway. I'm glad to hear that. I hadn't thought of it before, but looking back, sharing our writing has been an enriching experience. I should thank Monica for having us write for the club. I think we're all a bit apprehensive to trying something out of the norm, but having everyone, having read everyone's poetry, I can say I'd have it, can't say I'd have it any other way. Fucking Christ, dude. This is a day. Uh, I don't think I can argue with that. If I'm being totally honest, I was a bit anxious given my lack of writing experience. But it's been cool learning about everyone through their poems. I think I might have learned a bit about myself. I think I even learned a bit about myself. Ooh hoo hoo. Is that so, Fox? You know what? I think so. Well, as I've told you before, I believe writing to be a wonderful way for one to express themselves. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter if a poem is good or bad. It'd be unfair of me to invalidate one's representation of themselves like that, wouldn't it? I do believe that exploring one's own creative style is a wonderful thing. That's comforting. I was worried that I had disappointed you in some way. <laughs> eh? You thought... Why would you think that? I guess your writing is just really good. I feel like mine can't hold a candle to it. Is that so? 
does. Yuri places a hand on her chin, apparently deep in thought. I'm so sorry. Eh? I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable with my writing. Ooh, how ignorant of me. I fucking love this girl. She's great. And I cannot wait to do another run of this to do Yuri Row. <clears throat> Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. All I was saying is that your writing impresses me. I hope that one day I can write poems that carry the same kind of impact as yours, you know? I see. Forgive me, Fox, I'm just... a little too used to it. Used to what? Being disliked. Yuri, I... I shouldn't be saying that, should I? I'm sorry if that felt awkward. Do you mind if we move from that? Alright. Would it be okay if I read your poem now? Oh, of course. Here, I hope you enjoy it. Forlorn. Okay, this one I think is a new one. I, I don't recall this one being in the initial game. Though I think the poems do change depending on what route that you chose in the last game as well. I don't remember 100%, but I think the person whose route that you choose, their poems change. <clears throat> so, Forlorn by Yuri. Pastel Palettes is a band. God damn it. That's that's a Bang Dream Girls band, Pastel Palettes. Fuck off with that shit. <laughs> now I can't unsee that. Fuck. Put a fucking picture. Post me. Put a picture of that on screen right now. Anyway. Pastel Palettes. Shiver and shake. Underneath my gossamer wards. Words. I thought wands. I don't read cursive well. Out of reach, my shoulders ache. You float away, my pleas unheard. Lost in the silent, charcoal mist, I try to touch your silky hair. Glowing embers of passionate trysts, uh, whirling around in amethyst air. Verdant quadrilateral clovers navigate my rusty veins. Help me last until it's over. Take control, grab the reins. I hope one day to see you again, and hear your soothing, silent tune. I'll patiently wait for the moment when I'm sheltered under your gentle moon. I do like the rain in it. Like the, the rain, yes. The rhyme in this one. It's a very, just a classic A, B, C, B verse poem right here. That's pretty much 90% of everything that I wrote when I did do poetry in high school. But, uh, I like the, um, I like the rhythm that is in it. I almost feel like what she's going to wind up saying is that she tried to put a little bit more rhythm and rhyme into it because she's trying out that, uh, trying out something different. But we'll, we'll see. I'm curious. <clears throat> I'm sorry if this isn't the most interesting piece, but I wanted to try writing with a prompt in mind. Told you. It sounds like that restricted you a bit. Did you not want to write this? Oh, it's not that. It's just, I've been thinking a lot about my writing recently. I felt like I should try to challenge myself a bit. I see, so what was the inspiration behind this one? Hmm. Yuri takes a breath, apparently thinking of what to say. I suppose it's about an internal struggle between one's own desires and their best interests. I want to read that again now, suddenly I feel like there was something in that. There are certain words that reach out to me in that that I'm thinking of and I want to reread it now. I'm going to need to see that in post. It's important for those we care about to be happy, even if it means we cannot be happy ourselves. I imagine it's something I'll need to come to terms with. She mumbles that last part as though we were thinking out loud. I see. Well, thanks for sharing, Yuri. Yes, of course, Fox. I'm gonna go back to the history there really quickly, though. Just give me one second here. <clears throat> 